Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the bright side. We want to hear from you. Our number is 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or the longevity business or you want to, uh, you want to uh, help some a loved one, friend, family member, workmate dealing with a chronic health issue, we can help you. 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised in the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. That's my blogs. We update those regularly with blog posts as well as news stories. And you can also go to brightsideben.com or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470. Ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team. Love to have you on the on the team, we can help you build your business, do three-way phone calls. I can come out there, wherever you're at, help you grow your business. If you have enough folks, we can do presentations. There's all sorts of strategies and mechanisms and programs that Longevity has for helping you build your business. If you're interested in starting a little nutritional supplement gig, 866-735-2470 is the number to call. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com, Truth treatments.com. Make sure you take a look at our retinol gel, retinol 5% gel. All right. We are talking pregnenolone and the steroid hormones, our coping hormones. The steroid hormones are our, there are uh, uh, the hormones that help us deal with the ups and the downs. They help us deal with life. There are adaptation hormones. The body's amazing, spectacular ability to make it through the vicissitudes, the ups and the downs and all the things that happen to us and in our lives, the body's amazing ability, its amazing resilience is based on its ability to change as situations change, to have its biochemistry change as, the, as our experiences and as our environment changes. It gets bigger, it gets stronger, it gets weaker, it gets more shut down depending on the environment. Systems grow or shrivel depending on the environment. This is all controlled by the genes. We get skinnier and fatter, or more resistant or less resistant to disease based on what's happening in the environment, based on our ability to genetically adapt to the environment. And what do you think it is that controls that adaptation? It's the steroid hormones. The steroid hormones turn genes on and off to help us adapt to what's going on in our lives. There are coping and our survival hormones. Not like, not like adrenaline and not like serotonin. These are more quick-acting substances. Serotonin and adrenaline are water-soluble. Remember, water-soluble stuff is quick. Fat-soluble stuff is long-term. So the, we have an emergency system that kicks in when we're under emergency stress, and that's serotonin. That's based in serotonin and adrenaline. Yes, serotonin. A lot of folks would be surprised to hear that. Serotonin is not the happy hormone that everybody tells us it is. It's more like a vigilance and awareness hormone. Adrenaline is obviously an uh, emergency hormone, but these are quick-acting substances. They work instantly, really, really, really fast in seconds, and they're for emergencies, and they work temporarily. The body's supposed to calm back down again. The steroid hormones, those are working long-term. 
those are working for our long-term survival, for better or worse. For better or worse, this is a problem. It can, it's not necessarily a good thing. It can be a problem if we're under chronic duress. Cortisol, for example, is a steroid hormone that works, that has long-term effects. And if, uh, one of the major health, perhaps the most important reason for our health crisis is problems with cortisol, elevated cortisol. Certainly it's involved. It's long-acting. The steroid hormones in general are long-acting. This is where pregnenolone becomes important. Pregnenolone is the mother of all steroid hormones. It's the first of the steroid hormones. All steroid, horm steroid hormones are derived from pregnenolone, which itself, as we said yesterday, is, is a form of cholesterol. It's the first in a whole cascade of hormones. Uh, it's so cool how this happens. Hormone A gets turned into hormone B, to, into C, into D, into E, into F. That's called a pathway or a cascade. And by the way, understanding the pathways is really how you understand health, not clinically. This is an important distinction that nobody really makes. Most of our health today is, uh, is controlled by a clinical system where we control symptoms. The biochemistry is not as relevant as the symptoms. The biochemistry is all about what, we, what are called pathways. And if you want to know about how the body works, it's all in the pathways. And if you want to help the body get healthy, it's all in the pathways. A getting, to turn, a getting turned into B, getting turned into C, getting turned into D. Tinker toy A, shifting just slightly, it becomes tinker toy B. Remember, chemistry is about tinker toys. It's about shapes. Tinker toy A gets tweaked into tinker toy B, into tinker toy C, into tinker toy D. This is all called the pathways. And if you want to get healthy and you're not healthy, understand the pathways or find somebody who does. That's why you want a biochemist, not a doctor. If you're dealing with a chronic degenerative disease, you want somebody who understands biochemistry, not symptoms, not signs. That's why doctoring is a type of fraud. To doctor something is to commit a fraud. You go to the judge and you say, here's the evidence. It's doctored. That's not a good thing. Because to doctor, it means that you made something mean something that it really isn't. That's what doctors do. They say we're healthy because our cholesterol score is lower. But they don't understand the pathways, how cholesterol, is, how cholesterol is made or what cholesterol gets made into. If they understood the pathways, they'd never give a statin drug. If anybody understood the, statin, uh, the, the pathways, they would never take a statin drug. Because the statin drugs block a pathway. They keep chemical A or tinker toy A from being turned into tinker toy B. Not a good thing. You want the body to do that. The body can do it. But you don't want to artificially stop A from going to B. Bad, bad, bad medicine. That's the problem with drugs in a nutshell. They stop A from going into B artificially just to hide something to mask a symptom. So anyway, pregnenolone, it's not a nutrient. It's not one of the mighty 90 nutrients. The body can make it. It's not in the same category of importance when it comes to supplementing as the mighty 90 essential nutrients. That's why we don't talk about it all that much. You know, your mighty 90 essential nutrients are said to be essential because you must have them. Pregnenolone your body can make. So it's not really a nutritional substances. substance. Pregnenolone, in addition to being a, a, a pro-hormone and getting converted into other things, it has its own effects. It has some really, really, really cool effects. It's a stabilizer. And it particularly stabilizes brain cells and nerve cells, which are super highly active. In fact, that's probably where pregnenolone really, really excels. It excels in so many places, but it's very notable for its brain effects, and that makes it helpful for all brain and nerve health issues, including anxiety, insomnia, depression, jitteriness, seizure disorders. It can also improve learning and cognitive functioning. And because pregnenolone, as we get older, drops, our pregnenolone levels drop, it could be super important for folks dealing with brain problems, cognitive problems uh, as they get older, for mental health issues, for dementia, for Alzheimer's disease. Everybody, in my opinion, everybody who's dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's disease should be on 100 milligrams a day of pregnenolone at least, up to 200 or you can even do 300 milligrams of pregnenolone. Pregnenolone also has a very interesting effect on our other hormones, other steroid hormones, particularly our stress hormones, estrogen and, and cortisol, which makes sense when you think about how pregnenolone works. All right, we'll talk about that when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back. 
On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls in our next segment. If you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Check out our Retinol 5% Gel, as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, the multi-purpose anti-aging, skin moisturizing, and super-duper healing uh, cream that I developed. I've actually been working on it for a really long time. If you're dealing with uh, any kind of cuts or abrasions or you have some kind of rash that you want to calm down, you don't want to have scarring. Once you have a scar, a scar is there. A scar is, is a functional part of the body. It's there for good. But if you want to prevent a scar, that's when you want to really start to take care of your skin as the skin is developing and your nutrition for that matter as well. Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream is made with vitamin C as well as one of the skin's most underappreciated topical ingredients, and that is cholesterol. Yes, the bad guy, cholesterol. Cholesterol is super-duper important stuff. If you listen to this program for any length of time, you know I'm a fan of cholesterol. Cholesterol on the skin and cholesterol in the body. In terms of pregnenolone, pregnenolone is a type of cholesterol and when you talk about all the benefits of pregnenolone, you're really talking about all the benefits of cholesterol. Yet we still have a culture where we think it's a good idea to shut down cholesterol production. Pregnenolone has a calming effect on the body. Remember, we started talking about pregnenolone because we were talking about calming nutrients to, you can use with the ketogenic diet. So pregnenolone works with the ketogenic diet. Pregnenolone works with vitamin E. They all work together to kind of calm and stabilize the body, especially the brain. And especially for other stress hormones, pregnenolone has a calming effect a balancing effect on other stress hormones like estrogen and cortisol. These are long-term stress hormones, cortisol and estrogen, as opposed to the short-acting ones. And this makes pregnenolone really helpful for a lot of health issues, a lot of the jitteriness and a lot of the insomnia problems that are associated with est excess estrogen and excess cortisol. Skin problems, too. Uh, oily skin is a sign of excess cortisol. Sometimes following excess sugar. If your skin is really oily, rest assured you're burning through cortisol and you're probably doing too much sugar. That's the main reason why your skin gets oily and that makes pregnenolone a helpful supplement for folks dealing with oily skin or maybe even for acne. Likewise for, for uh, estrogenic health issues, including autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases have a major estrogen component. Uh, uh, PMS, also major estrogen component that could be supported or at least helped or at least have its symptoms softened or mitigated by using pregnenolone. Fibromyalgia, like, uh, likewise, these are all estrogenic health issues. Fibromyalgia, autoimmune disease, even Alzheimer's disease has an estrogenic component. PMS, I have personally seen some incredible benefits use, uh, uh, for PMS for women using like 100 milligrams a day. That's it, sometimes 200 milligrams a day. The emotional instability, the jitteriness, and if you have hot flashes, the same thing is true. Anxiety, any of the side effects associated with menopause, these are all linked to estrogen. Try 200 milligrams of pregnenolone at bedtime. Later on, we're going to be talking about progesterone, which is not quite as benign as pregnenolone, but it's still super helpful. It has the same, some of the same calming effects. In fact, pregnenolone and progesterone have a lot in common. If you're on hormone replacement therapy, if you're taking estrogen hormone replacement therapy, it would be really smart to get on a little bit of pregnenolone. First of all, you should definitely be doing progesterone if you're on hormone replacement therapy. These days, most doctors are aware that progesterone has to accompany estrogen. And now you know why, because progesterone calms things down. Progesterone has a balancing effect like pregnenolone. In pharmacy school, they told us this 30, 30 years ago. They said, always make sure progesterone and estrogen are dispensed together. But I was always amazed at how doctors would just dispense estrogen without progesterone. These days, not so much. Estrogen taken by itself without progesterone is linked to uh, uh, cancers, among other nasty toxicities. The only downside to pregnenolone supplementation is actually a little bit of drowsiness. So if you're taking pregnenolone, try taking it at bedtime. Because it is kind of calming. Although at just the right dose, interestingly enough, pregnenolone can actually have an energizing effect because of its importance for adrenal health. If you have just the right amount, that's what you're looking for, is just the right amount of pregnenolone. One of my favorite benefits of pregnenolone is that it stabilizes and antagonizes some of the side effects associated with anti-anxiety drugs. If you're taking Valium or you're taking Xanax, 
you probably want to throw in 100 milligrams or 200 milligrams of pregnenolone. According to a 2004 article published in the journal Neuroendocrinology, pregnenolone pretreated subjects, subjects who were given pregnenolone before they got their, their Valium, showed significant and, this is a quote, quote, significant and clinically relevant less sedation, unquote, following their Valium. It can be considered a blocker of part of some of the toxicity or some of the side effects associated with Valium. And this raises the possibility of using it to help people withdraw from Valium or withdraw from Xanax if people are hooked on Xanax. And there's also, by the way, an inter interesting relationship we talked a little bit about yesterday towards the end of the program. Uh, about uh, between marijuana, between cannabis and pregnenolone. As it turns out, this is so, so cool, and this is uh, just actually just came out a few months ago. Pregnenolone regulates the part of the brain that responds to THC. THC is the active ingredient in marijuana, and the part of the brain that responds to this active ingredient gets kind of calmed down, turned down. The volume gets turned down uh, via pregnenolone. When, when people smoke pot, pregnenolone bumps up. The brain makes a bunch of more pregnenolone under, uh, in the environment of THC. When you get THC in the brain, the brain says, boom, let's get some pregnenolone going out there. And a lot of it, it's one of the brain's safety steroids. It, it's neuroprotective. Pregnenolone is a neuroprotective substance. It protects the brain. So when you get THC levels that are bumped up from smoking, the brain uh, brain safety system kicks in and pregnenolone is produced in the brain, directly in the brain. The brain makes its own pregnenolone. This is one of the reasons why it's almost impossible to overdose on marijuana because the body knows how to deal with it. Pregnenolone secretion can be increased up to 3,000% according to this study when THC hits the brain. Cocaine will do it, by the way. Nicotine will do it. Nicotine will bump up, uh, that is, bump up pregnenolone. Cocaine bumps up pregnenolone. Alcohol will bump up your brain's pregnenolone. Morphine will bump up your brain's, uh, your brain's natural production of pregnenolone. But none of these things will do it as dramatically as marijuana. It doesn't, it doesn't block the high. You'll still catch your buzz, but you might catch it less intensely. And it can inhibit the less desirable side effects, according to this article anyway, in Science Magazine, of, of the memory problems and the cravings for more pot, according to the author of the study, Pierre Vincenzo Piazza. He's actually a, a French scientist, or he was practicing in France. He says pregnenolone can mitigate the anti-motivation effects of marijuana, so-called marijuana torpor, that's what they call it anti-motivation effects. We just don't feel like doing anything. Unfortunately, if you are using pot or marijuana to improve your appetite for chemotherapy or if you're using it for pain relief, pregnenolone will also block some of these effects along with memory loss and the anti-motivation and the cravings. This makes marijuana, for folks who are trying to wean themselves off pot, this makes pregnenolone a very useful supplement, by the way, because you won't get the same high, you won't get the same buzz. You'll get a little bit of a buzz, but you won't get the same buzz if you're using pregnenolone as a, uh, as a pre-treatment, maybe 300 milligrams of pregnenolone if you're interested in weaning yourself off of marijuana. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Got lines open for you. We're coming back with your phone calls and more good health information right after this. All right, we are back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us, friends. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. I want to say a few more. I'm not going to get to finish pregnenolone here, but I just want to say a couple more things. Pregnenolone calms the body down. That makes it awesome for adrenal fatigue issues. So many of us have adrenal fatigue issues. If you, uh, if you feel uh, woozy when you stand up quickly or if you're working out and you feel a little dizzy, that's signs that you have adrenal fatigue issues. If uh, you wake up in the morning and you're tired after a good night's sleep, that can mean adrenal fatigue issues. If you're craving salt, that can mean adre adrenal fatigue issues. If you're living in 21st century America, you're probably got adrenal fatigue issues because that's just the way we roll here in our, in our culture. There's lots of ways you can deal with adrenal fatigue issues. Salt is a great way. Celtic sea salt in water. Zinc is important. Minerals in general are important for the adrenal glands. Vitamin C is important for the adrenal glands. Iodine is important for the adrenal glands. These are all essential nutrients, but pregnenolone, not an essential nutrient, pregnenolone can also help if you're dealing with adrenal fatigue, not in the same way that a... Uh, 
that a nutritional supplement does it, but in a more direct way, almost in a drug-like way. Of course, it is benign and gentle, and it's uh, made by your body, so it's not like a toxic pharmaceutical drug, but it has a more medicinal effect. That can be very helpful, I might add. Pregnenolone can help lower your blood pressure. The adrenal glands are your, and the kidneys. Between the adrenal glands and the kidneys, that's how blood pressure is mostly regulated in the body. Pregnenolone can help decrease blood pressure. From uh, the journal Molecular Biology reports, pregnenolone decreases intraocular pressure. That's eye, uh, eye blood pressure or eye pressure if you're dealing with glaucoma. Uh, it just generally has this calming and relaxing and generally salubrious health-inducing effect on the body. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010. We're going to talk progesterone next. I've got a few more things I want to say about pregnenolone. Then we're going to talk about progesterone, which is another awesomely underappreciated and very important and very helpful hormone that is not patentable, so it doesn't really get a lot of cachet. But because it's so darn effective, even the drug companies couldn't ignore it. And so now you can get progesterone at the drugstore or... Uh, get a prescription for progesterone. I've been compounding progesterone cream for a long, long time, and I've been consistently blown away by the wonderful benefits of progesterone. And we will talk about that on our next Bright Side episode. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you on the Bright Side. Time to hit the phones. Kyle in San Diego, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Uh, yes, Kyle Satchel. Um, I was calling. I have high blood pressure um, diabetes and um, cholesterol, high cholesterol. And I was it's all like, part of the same picture, my dear. They call that metabolic syndrome. Have you heard of that term? No. Okay, it's all part of the same picture. A syndrome is when a bunch of different things happen under the umbrella of the same basic breakdown, which is good news for you because you can take care of all of that in one fell swoop. Diabetes, high blood pressure, and... Uh, what was the third thing you said there? Uh, cholesterol, cholesterol, elevated cholesterol, right. Um, you probably also have liver problems too because that's part of the same picture. Uh, and, and you may ultimately have kidney disease and you probably already, your kidney function is already starting to slow down depending on how old you are. This is all part of the same syndrome. It's called metabolic syndrome. They Officially, dementia and brain health problems are not part of it officially, but I put them there because they're all part of the same syndrome. And they all involve one thing and one thing only. Metabolic syndrome, it actually used to be called syndrome X, some people call it. Uh, circulatory problems, heart disease, uh, uh, elevated cholesterol, all the things you're talking about here. Uh, the one word that you want to understand and you want to start to leverage the power of is sugar. And by leverage the power of, I mean understand how not to get blown away by it. It's a sugar issue, my dear. It all goes with the diabetes, okay? So what you want to do first and foremost is you want to start treating your sugar. And sugar issues, blood sugar issues, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, they're so easy to address without drugs and without doctors. Easy, 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 easy. Shockingly easy. And Doc Wallach's been talking about it for decades, and he's gotten in trouble because people can't believe how easy it is. These days, it's been evidenced so many times that nobody doubts it anymore. You can turn this whole thing around starting immediately, my dear. First thing you got to do is you got to keep your intake of sugar, and by sugar I mean bread and pasta and cereal and potatoes and rice and all the foods we love so much, burritos and, and uh, uh, chips and desserts and fruits and fruit juices. You got to keep your intake of all these down to a minimum. Spe uh, fruits a little bit. You can have fruits a little bit because there's good stuff in the fruits, but even then, you're getting lots of sugar. So you got to keep the intake of sugar down. If you fall off the wagon, drink lots of water. It'll dilute your blood sugar. First thing in the morning, drink lots of water. It'll dilute your blood sugar. Grind up flax seeds. This is all in the interest of taking care of your blood pressure, in the interest of taking care of your cholesterol, as well as your diabetes and any other uh, metabolic syndrome type related symptoms that you might be dealing with. And that you might not, not even know you have. How old are you, by the way, Kyle? Approximately. I'll be 60. I'll be 62 okay. in June. Okay. Well, you can rest assured you got all these other stuff percolating along, even if you haven't been diagnosed. So keeping your sugar intake down, eating more protein is the best way to help your body wean itself off of sugar, especially uh, a protein that contains something called glutamine. In fact, you can actually get glutamine powder. It's probably a good idea to do that. And take uh, maybe half a, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon uh, in water every day. Half a teaspoon twice a day is a good thing, a good place to be. Do it with some food. 
uh, use uh, whey protein smoothies, get on the Slender FX from Longevity. Longevity has a new high protein meal replacement called Keto, uh, called the Keto Shake. You might want to try that as well. Make sure you're on the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. Take extra niacin. If you're using Longevity products, get on the Ultimate Niacin. Niacin helps the body process sugar. Of course, the Sweeties is also very important for helping the body process sugar. Use lots of vegetable juices. You see how we're working here, okay? Uh, now, yes, yeah. Okay. And the last thing I want to say, and this is really important, and you're not going to hear this on any other radio show, or at least that I know of. There is a major, major underappreciated link between the gut bacteria and blood sugar. Okay, and I'm predicting now, you're going to start to hear about this in the coming years. It may be a few years before you hear about it, but everybody listening right now, you're getting this advanced. It's in the literature, it's there, but it doesn't go to the lay press until five or ten years after it's in the research. And it makes sense anyway. Uh, uh, probi- that means probiotics, Kyle. Good bacteria. Get on the nightly essence, eat fermented foods, and make sure you're using veggies and do, don't do anything that messes up your intestine, namely eating foods that cause you a bellyache or foods that cause diarrhea or any kind of constipation or any kind of digestive health issues. Those are foods you need to eliminate. Between the foods and the sugar and the supplements, every single one of your markers will drop. Every one. Your diabetes markers will improve. Your cholesterol signs will improve. Your your blood cholesterol will drop, and any other uh, health challenges that you may be dealing with, including weight, by the way, that will improve as well. And, of course, the same with the high blood pressure. All right, Kyle, anything else you want to add? Anything else you want to ask? Uh, no. How about cholesterol? Uh, cholesterol will drop. It's a sugar issue. You tell this to your doctor. Are you being seen by a doctor? Yes. Well, you tell him that cholesterol. elevated cholesterol is a result of elevated sugar. It's a direct result, elevated blood sugar and insulin. Tell that to your doctor, okay? And if he has any questions, okay. he can call me. All right. That's the reason our cholesterol goes up, the most important reason. There's a few other reasons, but that's the most important reason. It's this elevated cholesterol is not an excuse to get poisoned with a drug. It's a reason to control your sugar. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on, Kyle. I hope I helped you out, Thank okay? You. Good luck. God bless you. Okay. Bye. All right. Uh, let's move on to Spanky in Florida. Oh, Spanky, there's the music, buddy. I apologize. Got to put you back on hold, okay? We'll get you first up when we come up. I apologize for that. Okay. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll take a break and come back with your phone calls and more good health information on The Bright Side right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Welcome, Spanky, to the bright side. You there, man? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Hey, buddy. Uh, uh, what we talked about yesterday was uh, uh, stress and blood pressure, and I was asking about the tangy tangerine that I've been on for a while and adding, like, the extra B vitamins. Um uh, I remember you said something about vitamin C, but is that ascorbic acid or is there a natural type of vitamin C that I can No, ascorbic acid is, is, you know, it's made, it's synthesized, but it's synthesized from corn. I mean, it's as natural as it gets. Uh, There are... Uh, there are what they call whole food supplements that you can get, and those are actually whole food supplements are always going to be better. You'll get the cofactors. The problem with the whole food supplement is you don't get the dose that you need, and ascorbic acid has medicinal properties at a high dose, and you're not going to get that from whole foods. Uh, you're not going to get it from foods, and you're not going to get it from a whole food supplement. So if you want to get the medicinal properties, and they're very valuable, very, very, very valuable of vitamin C, you really need mega doses on it, and that's not going to happen from, that's only going to happen from straight ascorbic acid. Uh, okay. it, does that make sense? Now, if you, yeah, oh, if you, yeah, oh. when you do do your ascorbic acid, if you want to get some of the whole food benefits, do it with some whole food. Do it with some berries. Do it with some some citrus fruits. Do it with uh, bioflavonoids. Do it with veggies. You know? Do you know what nature's best source, by the way, of vitamin C is? Uh, not right off. Not right off hand. Chili, pe- chili peppers. Hot peppers. Yeah, isn't that interesting? So hot peppers, uh, you know, do your vitamin C with some hot peppers, with some habanero if you like those, or chili, or whatever it is you like. Um, Also, kiwi, uh, papaya has a lot of vitamin C in it. Bell peppers have a lot of vitamin C in it. So so do it with some vitamin C-containing foods, but get your ascorbic acid, and you'll get the medicinal value of it. Does that make sense? Oh, 
Right. Yeah, it sure does. It sure okay. does. Okay. What else? Um, Anything else? Like and by the way, vitamin C is a great adrenal, uh, adrenal vitamin, not just for, for blood pressure issues. Vitamin C is just a, it's a panacea type. It's a, a good times type vitamin. So it just helps the body thrive. It's a thriving vitamin. So you get wonderful, wonderful multiple benefits from vitamin C uh, in high doses. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you going to say, Spanky? Um, the thing on the uh, stress, I, I think I know where the majority of my stress is coming from, but um, you are saying you know, how you say calm the body down. Yeah, I, everything you said yesterday, I do that. And I, So there's I something else going here. on. Now keep yeah, in mind. I'm not, I'm not sure, but. Well, hang on, Spanky. Listen. Listen up, man. Hang on. You, when we talk about stress and calming the body down, we tend to think about emotional things or the breathing, you know, ways that we can calm the body down uh, with, uh, directly. But other, some things that hype the body up are physiologic distress. So if you have a blood sugar problem, that's going to hype the body up, for example. If you have any kind of immune issue, that's going to hype the body up. So there are physiologic reasons that the body is hyped up, and those need to be addressed as well. So if you're doing the deep breathing and the relaxation and the hot water and you don't find you're getting the same ben the, the good benefits and you should be you absolutely should be getting really good benefits from that you might have some kind of physiologic issue going on that's putting the body in a survival mode or emergency mode how old are you by the uh, way uh, 55 okay and what's your height to weight uh, well I was back in uh, December, I was touching 235, but now, like I said, I do my cardio and stuff. I'm down to 210. 210, what's your height? Uh, 510. Okay, so unless that 510 is, you know, bodybuilder 510, uh, two, 510, 210, unless you're in that proportion of the bodybuilder type thing, you're probably carrying weight. Now, I'm not beating you up for that. I'm simply Pardon. saying I'm simply saying that that's the manifestation of other physiologic issues. For example, we talked with the last caller about metabolic syndrome. Well, I'm, I can't see you, so I can't tell how you're distributed, how that 210 pounds is distributed. But if it's distributed around the gut, around the visceral area, the belly, then the chances are pretty good that you're dealing with metabolic syndrome. And that would definitely cause your blood pressure to go up. That means your blood sugar is not being handled correctly. When blood sugar is not handled correctly, sugar represents an emergency to the body. Sugar is explosive. So if you're losing the ability to control sugar, or if your insulin is too high in order to control that sugar, that will keep your blood pressure up too. So when we say relax the body and calm the body down, it's not just not just the emotional, psychic ways of calming the body down. It's also, or the, the, the mechanical ways, I should say. It's also the biochemical ways of calming the body down. And, and blood sugar is just one thing. Uh, I was also talking about the relationship between the gut and blood sugar. So perhaps, and I don't know this for a fact, but it's possible that you're dealing with dysbiosis, which is messed up gut bacteria. That will cause a problem with blood pressure, or, uh, I'm sorry, with blood sugar, and also it will cause a, pl a problem with blood pressure. Uh, as the blood sugar gets out of control. So that might be a factor also. You see, where, you see what I'm saying here? So if you're doing everything I told you, then these are other places you want to work. And by the way, the fact that you lost the weight is a very good sign because it means you're trending in the right direction. It's only been four or five months that you've lost 40 pounds or so, or 30 pounds. What did you say, 20 pounds? How much have you lost? Uh, uh, 235 down to 210. All right, so you lost 25 pounds. All right, you lost 25 pounds in four months. That's not bad, Spanky. So you may very well be trending in the right direction. And I, I don't know that. But if you want a couple more places to focus on, focus on the blood sugar and focus on digestive health, particularly in terms of uh, bacteria, good bacteria in the intestine. Does that make sense? Yes, it sure does. Okay, Spanky, good luck with everything. Glad you called. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, take care, man. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Carl, the Truth Raider, what's going on? Benjamin, dire warning for everyone and everybody listening. Bump yes. up your nutrition right now. Yeah. Chemtrail flu is out there. I'm not fear-mongering. I'm just giving the solution to everybody out there. Bump what's up the solution, BTT, Carl, the Truth Raider? BTT, everything you possibly can, and do it times two. Look at this. Look at the news. Is it in the pop, news? Pop superstar. For the 80s and 90s, Prince uh -huh. Rogers Nelson, dead at 57. Parent flu, uh, I'm not describable, not knowing what the cause was, but we know what it was. You think it was chemtrails? You must have had a field day with that. You must yeah. have loved that. <laughs> a few days ago, I, gave the, I, I talked about it a few days ago, as you know. Chemtrail flu. Interesting. That's you need to pop up your uh, nutrition. Anyway, I want to talk briefly, while we have a couple minutes left, about... Uh, 
biology, human biology, this is an interesting study. I don't, know if, I don't know if you agree with this or not, but give me your take on this. There are a certain particular group, the African-American group and the European group. African-Americans, they, they're saying, are more selenium-based. And the Say that again. Say that again slowly. Say that again one more time. African-Americans and selenium. I, I didn't quite catch that. They seem to be that. more based in What does that mean, based? What do you in mean, based? In their biology, in their chemical makeup. They're they based, they use more selenium more, selenium. are you saying? They are made of selenium more. Wow, well, you'll have Our to send me something on that, Carl, the truth based. reader. You'll have to send me something to read on that. That doesn't sound right to me. Doesn't sound right? Okay, no. well, they're also saying the, the Caucasians are more sulfuric based. Where are you reading this? This is some studies that, 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 are, that are out there, and I don't know if they're completely true or not. But I well, want that to doesn't sound right to me. But send, will you send that to me if you have anything you can send me? I'd like to read it. Yeah, I, I, could, I, could, I could send a, a video link to your email if you want me to. Do that. Yes, do that. I would like that. Selenium and sulfur work together, by the way, so that's kind of interesting that they would pick those two. Selenium and sulfur are both very important detoxification substances. They're both important for skin health. Um, sulfur, in particular, plays a role in insulin. Oh, they both do, actually. They both play a role in, in helping with blood sugar. They're both super, super important. And interestingly, they're both deficient in the standard American diet because of the way we, uh, because of soil depletion. Both sulfur and selenium tend to be, def- especially sulfur, deficient in the soil. And also, you don't really know how much sulfur and selenium are in the soil. That's really an interesting thing when it comes to minerals in the soil. By the way, thanks for bringing that up, Carl. I appreciate it. I'm going to let you go, buddy. Sure. Have a good you. day. Thank you. Uh, when, when it comes to sulfur and selenium uh, in soil, when it comes to all minerals in the soil, you don't really know what you're getting. You know, we always assume, like I was saying earlier, oh, well, red uh, chili peppers are nature's best source of vitamin C. Well, it depends on where the chili peppers are grown. You know, just because broccoli is supposed to have a lot of sulfur in it or onions are supposed to have a lot of selenium, that doesn't mean that the onion you're eating or the broccoli you're eating has a lot of uh, selenium and a lot of sulfur. It depends on the soil it's grown in. And these days, the soil that we're growing our crops in is seriously depleted in nutrients and minerals. This was one of Dr. Wallach's brilliant insights is you're not getting the minerals. We're not getting the minerals because the, the minerals aren't in the soil. The stuff's depleted, which is why it's so darn important to get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, why it's so important to get on a good nutritional supplement program. That's why anybody who tells you all you got to do is eat your food, and I hear it all the time, and I read it all the time from people say you shouldn't be supplementing, you just get everything you need for food. Nonsense. You can't do it. No, and that doesn't even include the processing and the cooking and all of the ways we treat our food. I'm talking about from the ground up because of soil depletion. All right. That's the end of the program, folks. Thanks so much for listening. Tomorrow or in our next Bright Side episode, we'll continue talking or finish talking about pregnenolone and continue the ketogenic diet. And then we'll talk about progesterone, one of my all-time favorite hormones, along with pregnenolone. And, uh, of course, we'll take your calls as well. If you're interested in checking out our Truth Treatment products, head over to truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our retinol 5% gel. And if you're interested in joining the Bright Side Ben team, call 866-735-2470. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourself an awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now. 